Hey, what's up guys? This is Paul, the auto technician from Paul Lunch Autos Garage. And today we want to take a look at a, a GPS tracking device on your vehicle and how they use it to remotely disable your car in case you are late on settling um, an installment. Maybe you defaulted in settling an installment and uh, they don't see you for a couple of months. They disable your car and it cannot move. And what they do, they send a towing truck to come and collect your car. And then now you cannot get your car back until you go and settle down with them wherever you owe them. They allow you to take your car and they enable the starting of the engine. Now I've seen situations or cases whereby a couple of guys have stalled in the middle of the road. Their vehicles had been remotely shut down or shut off. They could not move. And when they call mechanics or electricians to go and uh, check out the problem, they could not find any problem. Like the vehicle was okay. The only thing they realized is that the vehicle was, had been remotely disabled and that was it. That was the end of their thinking. So what I'm going to do right now, we want to go ahead and take a quick look of the basic aftermarket GPS remote disabling system and how you can overcome that challenge if you face one and continue on moving on. Now, this one here, I'm not encouraging you to go and disable any GPS locating device on your car. You're doing that at your own risk. This one is simply to help you to get out of a situation whereby you've been stuck, you cannot move, you are stranded and you are helpless. Because I don't want to imagine you go and your vehicle gets remotely disabled, especially if you are a lady in a crazy remote area. That one is not safe. So let's go ahead and uh, have a look, uh, a detailed brief look of how it works <coughs> and how you can overcome it, okay? So these are our devices right here. They are all four wires, both of them. This one is a passive uh, GPS locating device, all right, or a tracking device. And this one here is the, the active one. This one here is for shutting down the vehicle in case you default on uh, settling down the installment or what you owe them, right? This one here is the one they use with the white wire to remotely shut your vehicle down. And this one here is the, the, the passive one, the one that tracks your vehicle even when it is sitting on the parking lot, uh, even for longer periods of time. They can be able to track it. Say in case you don't run your vehicle for like uh, two weeks or three weeks, they will still be able to know the positioning of your car uh, based on the data they receive from this little tracking device, right? And this one here is the one that they use to remotely shut down your engine. In case your vehicle gets stolen or you default on um, making the payments of uh, the installments you're supposed to make. So this is schematic diagram that I've prepared so that we can understand clearly and better how this system works. All right, we have our primary power source right here, the 12 volt battery. This is our uh, GPS locating device. This is the ground wire. And th these three wires are spliced together to be powered always on. And this one is the passive uh, tracking device. Okay, the one that tracks your vehicle even when it is seated for longer periods uh, on the parking lot right this is our ignition switch it also gets the power from the battery we have the factory relay uh, for fuel pump this one here controls the the fuel pump that supplies fuel to the fuel rail of any engine okay so this is that relay it's a four pin relay and um, this one here it's a factory relay it comes with the car now we have our fuel pump here and we have our BCM. Then we have the, the second tracking device which one which which now disables your car. And we have this relay here that controls controls the fuel supply. So what happens is that um, we have this wire here, this one here, the factory relay, and this relay is powered by the ignition switch, or it can even be powered by the ECM. 
on pin 86 and pin that pin 86 is the control power pin 85 is the the grounding power and pin 87 is the load right this one here supplies current to the the component that is targeted or intended to be operated okay so this one here when i switch the ignition switch on the pcm or the intelligent uh, power module distributes power or current to various components including this relay here the fuel pump relay and um, so it is powered on pin 30 and pin 86 okay now the ground or power can be applied on any side because it's a, it's a coil winding it's a coil winding application inside the relay so it doesn't matter the polarity power or ground can be applied on either side the only thing happens is that you cannot apply power and ground at the same side okay they have to oppose one another so this one here is powered and this BCM here the body control module it grounds this uh, fuel pump relay it grounds it okay and in some situations this is a smart uh, switching ground whereby it is frequency controlled uh, depending on the speed and the volume of fuel the fuel pump is uh, pumping onto the fuel rail okay so if the, the fuel pump is uh, powerful and pumping at high speeds pumping high volume of fuel this one here it controls via duty cycle this uh, it controls this uh, control by a duty cycle by a smart switch which increases or decreases the duty cycle or the frequency uh, in that case so this wire here it goes directly to the fuel pump now what happens with these uh, guys who install these devices they cut this wire right here and they bridge a relay here you see this relay here now all right we want to make a, a slight correction right here this one here it has two power supplies this one here and this one and this wire here is supposed to be the ground wire yeah that's my ground right so never mind about how the it looks like this one is not supposed to be connected to this other wire this wire here it grounds this uh, tracking device okay and then we have the smart switching ground here so this relay is a, a a five pin relay but they use only four pins what happens is that they have the control on pin 86 and pin 85 we have power and ground all right and then you have pin uh, 30 and you have pin 87a this one here is vacant it's supposed to have a a connection a pin but it, it doesn't have any pin it's vacant so when um and this is the relay in question that we're talking about here let me show you this one here now many of you know uh, this relay and what it is used for okay it's for the aftermarket uh, tracking devices installed on your vehicle so this is a it's actually supposed to be a five pin relay but it's only a four pin relay all right the reason why they don't uh, they don't apply that ex extra pin 87 is because it is powering nothing so what happens is that um, in case you default on uh, settling your installment like you you've not paid your installments for uh, maybe if you are even lucky enough a couple of months this guy here the the financiers will contact these guys who installed this device on the vehicle give them the registration uh, the details of your vehicle um, and then they will start tracking your vehicle wherever it is and you know how they remotely disable it they command this uh, device by a software or an application and it contacts these switches here wherever it is fitted on your car this switch here it flips and contacts this ground here okay so what happens this relay get energized or activated and since the fuel is constantly being supplied through pin 87a the, the, the passive position of this uh, five pin relay this switch flips from pin 87a to the pin 87 position the active position from the default position to the active position and they cut fuel okay fuel can no longer be supplied to your uh, engine and that's when the, your vehicle shuts off 
and you get stranded and sometimes you call people and they cannot figure out what the problem is all right guys uh, we've gone through the our little uh, basic example of uh, a remote disabling device or a tracking device on your vehicle and i've shown you the little tips of how it works so in case you get stranded uh, you can call a guy who knows uh, the electrical systems of uh, a car very well, pretty well, and they can be able, they can be able, and they can be able to locate the problem on your vehicle within a couple of uh, minutes. Okay. Now, if you feel like you are some of you out there who are DIY selfers, and you feel like you are brave, brave enough, and you got the guts to go ahead, like you are fearless, like me. You got the guts to go ahead and uh, disable the system. It's okay. You can go ahead and do it at your own risk. But don't tell them I, I told you to do it, okay? A caveat. It's not Paul who has told you to go ahead and disable the tracking device or the tracking system of your vehicle. You've done it on your own. And if there are any consequences, you just carry your own cross. Thank you very much for watching this video, uh, hit the like button, if you are new on this channel, kindly subscribe to my channel, so when a new video like this one comes out, you will be among the first guys to be notified, and know very well that I care about you and your safety, that's why I've made this video, especially if you are a lady, you get stuck out there, and you have nowhere to go, you can have a basic idea, and uh, when you call a guy to come and fix it, you can even uh, share that basic idea with them so that they can uh, fasten or hasten the process of uh, getting you out of that problem, okay? Thank you very much. See you on the next one.